Welcome back to this Honcast presentation. I'm your casting host, Beef, filling in for Breaky CPK, and we are here in the Swedish Pride event, the semifinals where Lions Esports Club leads 1 0 over AFK Milking Cows. With me, my co caster, Emperor of the Honcast crew. Emp, I don't know, man. This game is pretty insane. Game number one, we saw a lot of fast paced action, and then the Keeper of the Forest Tempest combination. Yeah, we did see the Keeper of the Force Summons combination. We're actually going to see it again this game, Beef. Blind bands are out. Why don't you read those off for us? Yeah, we do have Ophelia and Master of Arms being banned out by VN Sensation. While on the other side, Monkey King and Scout going to be banned. So Super KGE and Peewee both playing a very, very good Monkey King. Going to actually blind ban that hero this time. And then, of course, that Scout that we saw Fabelli playing yesterday going to be removed from the pool. Yeah, they don't want to have to deal with the jungle harassment and the trickery of a scout suicide. So, taking out of the game, meanwhile, the Monkey King is more of a tailored ban towards Peewee. Uh, besides that, Master Arms Ophelia, surprising to see them banning those out. They are phenomenal uh, first picks across the board. A rally not being banned out yet, but I'll be keeping my eye on him as we enter the banning phase. Keeper of the Forest Tempest locked up, and so far, uh, they honestly can go with either one depending on what they want to do for their suicide. A lot of times you see teams favoring Keeper of the Forest a bit, but it honestly depends. A Tempest jungle, if you're picking Keeper of the Forest, you're not picking up for your jungle typically right now. Because that jungle role, I feel, is fulfilled better by a jungle which is able to get down and dirty a lot sooner. Gank that mid lane, gank the mid dual laner, you know, make things happen. Whereas a Keeper of the Forest is forced to be more passive about it. Super KGE locking up Trumbull there, last lock, along with the Shadow Blade uh, coming out from Hanskin earlier in the pool. And those are actually both heroes that Super KGE plays. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Super KGE on Tremble, back when I first started casting about seven months ago now uh, with Han, he was playing Tremble a ton and was known as one of the best Tremble players in the scene. So would love to see that one come out once again. But a Shadow Blade, I don't know, man, could be going that Dawnbringer Shadow Blade that we talked about yesterday. Yeah, I mean, as I said before, I'm not actually as psyched about Dawnbringer on Shadow Blade as a lot of people where I think it is a good pickup for him, I guess, but... I don't think it's like the game changer item for him that everyone made it out to be. It does give him a lot of what he needs. Actually, surprisingly, Grimoire Power is actually really owned on him too, which is something that people don't consider. But Grimoire is another phenomenal route, makes those spells that she has to them do a lot more damage and gives him an insane farming mech. So both are potential options to consider. Uh, still, sometimes you do need those. You just have you need the shrunken head. Sometimes you need to just get straight earlier tank and you can't really afford to just go for something uh, that's straight build up like the Dawnbringer. Uh, we'll have to actually see. We saw Lions Esports Club before the, you know, quote unquote buff due to the release of Lon Life Brand to Shadow Blade. Uh, they were actually picking him anyway, running him a lot of times in a uh, mixed semi carry strat where they'd have a Wretched Hag, a Hammer Storm, and a Shadow Blade all sort of growing into the late game together while providing early game pressure. Well, we will see about that Shadow Blade. Holy moly, they are blowing through these picks right away. Um, looking at the band zone, so, seeing how they did manage a first pick rally right here. Moon Queen and Artillery coming out for your carries, as well as Predator being uh, banned out. Flux, Parasite, and Deadwood in there as well. So a lot of those initiators left on the board, notably the Rally and the Pebbles, which we see as picks one and two so far. Yeah, and uh, Wretched Hag and Pebbles going together very, very well. Uh, Pebbles known for that earlier burst. Aluna is still in the pool, by the way, so keeping an eye on her to get picked up potentially as an assistance to the burst of either Rally or Pebbles. Meanwhile, the lock pull does show the fact that they're trying to grab their supports out of it, along with the jungle. So the odds of that happening, probably not too great. I'm expecting uh, Lions to probably look to grabbing something like that Engineer, which is available. Yeah, very real possibility when they do go for that lock pull. Uh, right now, with the bubbles in the rally, they already have two possible suicides over here on the Legion team. Could be the suicides and the so uh, solo. Or we could see the rally actually head into the middle lane while Favelli takes the bubbles into the suicide. Uh, and, oh, there we go. I that like is it. an interesting pick. And actually, he can get outside the Keeper of the Forest route. Meanwhile, he can root the Swift Blade during the spin. So a little bit of interesting interaction there. The Kraken is picked up, which leads more to the belief that Legion side looking to maybe pick up Tempest, given the fact that they have a suicide here uh, in the bubbles. So they want to Keeper of the Forest as much. I think Keeper Jungle is kind of weak. So if they go Keeper, I'm actually frowning upon it a bit. Unless they're running in a different spot. So Tempest potentially being picked up here. Um, but Keeper of the Forest Kraken absolutely devastating in its own right, man. 
So that's why I'm actually afraid. I actually feel like it's a little bit more devastating here. A little bit more powerful combo coming out for the Hellborn team. Combined with the Engineer, uh, I, I feel already, man, I, I like what VDT is kind of going for. I, I haven't seen supports on Path lose over the past few days. But I gotta say, in this game, I think Kraken is phenomenal against other melee carries. I think they have a really nice scaling between early game and late game here. Uh, in their hero picks and the way it all sinks in together and the way it sort of works against this melee carry of Swiftblade. In spite of those buffs, I, I feel like it's not going to be enough. Yeah, we'll have to see. The Hellborn team definitely uh, going to be really rolling around in the power of these synergistic team fight ultimates. And of course, we'll have some kind of carry potential there on Wretched Hag, who is going to be played by Mr. Uh, Flensmeister, one of his signature heroes. But this Legion team, we're going to have to see how they go about the laning phase and really what kind of an early advantage they're going to be able to find. PB is going to be heading into that bottom lane, it looks like, to be supported by Empath, whereas Rally might do the solo mid thing. I, I really don't see the Swift Blade going mid. There's not really a possibility for that, is there? Uh, it wouldn't make sense with their setup. Not with the Rally on the team. So not with it's... the Bubbles on the team. Going to be a short lane Swift Blade then against a Suicide Kraken? Is that what I'm seeing here? Uh, they have the Keeper of the Forest that's being played by uh, Hanskin. It looks like they're they're content with being run, with running it in more of that jungle slot, even though I said before, if there's one thing I think that their team has going for them, I think it's the fact that Tempest is able to actually gank the lanes a bit more earlier. Still, they have a bunch of tanky heroes. Heroes with the great mobility in the Wretched Hag and Kraken who can sort of get away from ganks and make it a little bit harder, so... Yeah, I mean, once they're able to hold on and get level 6, it really doesn't matter, but a lot of times the momentum is already in place by that point, which is why I like the Tempest, and given the, the, the buff to the roaming with, with the Rune of Refreshment spawning every time as well, it typically has favored that matchup when they're placed in the jungle roles. Uh, team compositionally, though, man, I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, looks like Kraken is going to be placed off in the mid lane instead of Wretched Hag playing the suicide role here on... Uh, and Flensmeister, oh. which is very uncharacteristic for lions. Uh, the trees here actually just got shut the hell down by support. Using a beautiful wall, actually pushed the trees into the tower. He got credit for one of those tree kills and the experience for both. And uh, that tree pull is no longer actually going to work. Yeah, which makes Wretched Hag in this suicide role suffer a lot, lot more. Uh, you know, still though, going against something like a, you know, I feel it's good they didn't put Kraken down here. Kraken does really rely on the momentum, whereas Wretched Hag can pick it up. She has a lot of safe spell damage coming out between her, a bat blast between her, uh, you know, Sonar Scream as the game goes on. Then she's very good at picking up farm due to her split push potential. Um, Empath, however, is phenomenal at boxing out a hero like Wretched Hag. I can't really trade her ass with her. Sure, she can break Essence Link by blinking away, but it still does the job of boxing her out, not to mention the, the, the power of a wall level one. Yeah, and already stacking. We're going to see the interaction down here as Wretched Hag does start to take some additional damage. Going to blink, and if Empath gets a good wall, Swiftblade is there with the spin, and Flensmeister could actually go down right now. And in fact, he will. Peewee picks up the Bloodlust, and this is the power of support, man. Yeah, shout out to Empath right there for every time. I want every Empath you ever play with. It's like, oh, I couldn't wall. He wasn't in range. You're like, wall, wall, wall. Right there, you do have the range, man. You do have the range. You're just not casting it. It's an 800 range illusory veil. He placed it perfectly. He got on the other side. And the support showing people how to play that hero, man. He is uh, absolutely crazy, man. Like, he, you, you talk about Empath, and that's like a second or third tier support hero in most people's eyes. You have support playing it. He elevates that hero and shows you exactly what it's capable of. Yeah, I... Yeah, no, perfect. So, yeah, you gotta keep in mind, the cast range is 800 on that wall. And he's perfect at finding that angle, so, I mean, really, really, you don't expect to see a Swift Blade Empath Lane actually first blooding the, this Wretched Hag, especially with that blink up, but, yeah, perfectly placed wall, excellent placement, Swift Blade got in on there, now he has his boots on top of it all, so, uh, it can be even harder for this Wretched Hag to soak up experience. Taking a look, they do, see, does have a ward, uh, did have a ward placed there on the side, so Wretched Hag able to see the Empath approaching a bit, but, uh, throughout all of this, he was able to get that stack off. It is only a double pool right now. Yes. So should only be able to deny one wave around that and just get the experience from it. But it is still something going to keep his levels up since he's not getting any from the lane. As Swift Blade pretty much gets uncontested free farm. Yeah, she wasn't able to get that triple stack off because she was actually doing a little bit of counter warding. 
the rune vision now gone for the Hellborn team, and Empath going to be able to start working on some more pulls, but Wretched Hag definitely going to have trouble down there. I want to take a look at this top lane where Fabelli just picks up boots on bubbles. He's sitting on 13 and 3 as a bubbles, whereas Kraken is completely out of regen, sitting on 8 and 1 CS. Fabelli dominating this long lane. Yeah, Fabelli, let me take a look over there. I was still watching the, the pool there and how that was going. Yeah, Fabelli on that. Oh, dude, it's a crack, and yeah, a crack against his bubbles. And, and he yeah, didn't bubbles. take a shield yeah. to lane. He didn't take a shield to lane at all. You're right. Wow, okay. Yeah, picked yeah, it up mistake. later. That's a mistake when you're going something like a bubbles. And how was the regen situation on each side? I, I didn't check bubbles regen early, but I know Kraken did go to lane with a Runes of the Blight plus a health potion, but no shield. I think that his build yeah, was actually no. designed to go for that swift blade in the bottom lane as mid oof rally having to use the compel there to get out of a sticky situation i'm feeling like they adapted it i mean maybe um it would make more sense how they laned it in the end but right now man uh they're off to a really really powerful start looking at the junglers uh tempest level four keeper level four uh, nothing crazy there tempest hasn't actually ganked anything yet so not seeing that additional roam factor coming in um, moving towards the bottom lane, but Steel Kid does have a ward there, so it's going to be tricky. He's probably just going to rush level 6, try to get behind oh, the tower Hag there. Meanwhile, should be in some serious trouble right here. Has the Flash of Darkness. Essence Link broken immediately. There's the support wall coming in, and the spin is there. Zergo gets credit for the kill on Rally. And this could actually set up a pretty significant push as the Blade Frenzy actually brings down the creeps very, very quickly. And yeah, this tower most likely will drop. Oh, for sure. Uh, she's not something you're expecting to see. Who needs nice a Tempest, man? Rally, man. Not often you see it. Solely, solo Rally mid actually getting involved in ganking the offlane. If anything, you expect a jungler, but uh, this allowed Tempest to keep power farming throughout and taking out this tower uh, is going to give them an immense advantage because normally you see the timing as such that when the Legion team, they both hit the jungles at level 6 around a similar time, right? And they sort of crawl out of the jungle and they go to push that safe lane, make a gank happen and push that safe lane. And normally you see each uh, respective tower falling at the same time. Legion and Hellborn's uh, off lane, first tier tower, they both tend to get, you know, one one team's pushing the other side, the other side's counter pushed. In a case like this, they got this for free. So they can't really, uh, you know, if they're going to push that top tower there now, it's going to be at a cost. They're either going to be set up to try to defend it, or they'll be able to take out something like the second tier or the mid tower instead. Yeah, very, very interesting way that that does play out, and definitely going to be in AFK Milking Cow's favor. As support now could have free roam of the jungle, going to be helping to stack for his Tempest, make sure that Swift Blade has something to farm when he gets some new shiny items. And what is actually being delivered on the courier? It is an Energizer, straight out for Peewee. I was going to say, Swift Blade right now, the way I prefer it, Energizer, definitely. Whether you want to go with Ghost Marchers or Steam Boots is up to you, but I think Steam Boots Energizer gives you a lot of stats. It gives you a... Sh they buffed it so that right now, I mean, you just have 100% attack speed during your spin when it's level 4, totally. I mean, actually, at all levels, you just have a little bit reduced damage beforehand. So given the fact that you maintain full attack speed, Energizer Steam Boots, and if you're spinning on top of targets that are stunned or disabled, you do so much damage. It gives you the stats to survive combos like uh, coming out of heroes like Pebbles uh, and such. I think that that is more the way to go. So this early this early start definitely looking good. I did say though, I feel like the Hellborn lineup is pretty effective at dealing with uh, you know melee carries. They did make it so Swift Blade spin isn't purged out when he's uh, not purged out, but he doesn't get purged when he's spinning through it. Something like that. Engineer's Energy Field along with Predator's Stonehide. So that's a plus. I do like the build he's going for, though, so Pee Wee impressing me for sure. Yeah, definitely going to be doing that. Of course, only suffering from crits. Uh, not going to be able to crit while he is in Blade Frenzy. But other than that, definitely going to be he's doing damage. He's not even leveling up his crit yet, though. He's just going yeah, stats. Yeah, exactly. Not really that's, sort of that's not going to matter uh, until he starts getting those levels in it. So during this point, he is definitely something to be reckoned with. And support off doing a little bit of pulling once more here. Oh, no. Just watching the creeps there. Yeah, missed a couple of them. The tower kind of went walkie on him. Yeah. Um, but back in this top lane, how's it going between Bubbles and Kraken? Man, oh man, for Belly at 370 gold per minute as the suicide Jonas is getting crushed up here. And this is just, uh, what can they do? Do they need to rotate these lanes? That's not something you should typically see out of a Kraken too. I mean, he did a lot of safe for us. It's hard for Kraken to get in on him. Ooh. You all, Pee Wee, man, with support, picking off Flensmeister again. Uh, the second Empath lands that Essence Link, man. 
Uh, it's almost enough. He can't escape. Swiftblade does have that ultimate, and it keeps vision of him for a second as he blinks, too, so he knows exactly where he's going, and it allows the, for that follow-up uh, Illusory Veil to do work as well. Um, wow, all lanes, man. All lanes are collapsing. Did you catch that, Toppy? I actually did not. Rally was up there with the Compel and the Seismic Slam, I assume. Yeah, Bubbles using the Kelpfield Shell Surf Song of the Sea, so all spells used by this VDT team, the uh, AFK Milking Cows, and they catch out the kill onto Yonasum Fan. Look at that wall coming out bottom lane! Absolutely massive! I don't even know what's going on right now, man. Crap! Did you catch that beef? I did not! This is- this, there's too much action! Looked for sure, looked for sure like he was in to get away. Huge wall coming out from Math Path, catching there on the corner. Uh, allowed Pewee to just get on in there with the spin, and you know, from there on out, you know what happened, so. Uh, Ratchet Hag really suffering, all the lanes collapsing, so any perceptive advantage I may have given the Hellborn team, uh, based on lineup composition, not mattering when you have this much of an edge. 4,000 gold, 3,000 XP in the early game. You can look at that almost like a mid-game advantage of 10,000, honestly, you know, because the gold means more during these early stages, especially when you're picking up those early teamfight items. Meanwhile, Steam Boots, look at it, picked up by Pee Wee, 483 gold per minute. And here's the other thing, when you're playing a hero like Swiftblade, sitting up there and just farming straight for the Rune Cleaver makes no sense at all. Your skill set is designed to slay. You have the skills, you have the damage output to get involved in fights early on. Why would you sit back and farm for that Rune Cleaver? And you saw when Swiftblade has been played recently in competitive play, uh, people like Pee Wee now and uh, Slicks actually before, they were going for more early fight items, like either the Ghost Marchers, the Helm of the Black Legion, uh, the Portal Key, Portal things King, like that, yeah. the Frostburn, th things like this let you get involved and let your team smash. I mean, you don't need to sit back there and farm for a Rune Cleaver, that's not your job. You can farm anyway by, by just crushing, so if you want to get it a little bit later uh, as a damage item and farming tool, sure, but you need to build up to be able to fight. Well, that's what Peewee is doing right now. Going to get some potions delivered to him. He's going to have to back up here in just a second. Doesn't have a whole lot of region on him. I don't know what that courier was doing. It started delivering potions. There we well, go. He's haunted. He got haunted, and then he had full items. So he wanted to back off. He's going to use it here uh, while he's a little bit further away. Getting the stack. Oh, actually, Tempest will stack another camp for me. He's going to get the stack off first, and then eventually use them. There oh, you go. Honestly. Oh. Did he use it to get vision there, actually? I didn't see. The, uh, the bird? Yeah, he was using the bird to actually get vision. The triple stacked jungle camps are going to be taken down here. That's what he wanted the potions for, knowing that he would need those to actually deal with the jungle. And he's just going to keep on farming nearly 500 gold per minute right now. And we'll go for another blade friend here in just a few seconds. But the Hellborn team going to respond to this by finally taking a first tier tower 10 minutes in. Bubbles is coming in, oh, gets the deny. Shell surf. Ooh, do they have any vision? They do not have any rev wards. But there's actually they're just gonna go for it right now. And keep it a force will go down. Was he not invis? Um seemed like he was just hiding in the trees there, Reef. I well, a very, very nice shell surf coming out from Bubbles gets the vision, the compel seismic slam and the auto attack to finish it off, keeper of the forest. Man, the Lions Esports Club, I mean, I said to you in between the games, if Lions plays like they did in this game, referring to game one, they will they will not drop a map. And unfortunately, VDT is not allowing them to play that way. They're not allowing them to get to this team uh, ganking support level as Bubbles TPs into an energy field. Nice take cover on the keg. Huge drops the Kelp field and Engineer goes down. Root onto two players right here. There's the Chuck backward. Pebble's not going to be using the Slagmites just yet. Compel onto Empath. She's going to be getting out of there. The Essence Link is there. Dodges the Tsunami charge. Gets the wall and she gets out of there. Are you kidding me, support? Pebbles is coming in. Has the portal key in one second. And Bat's going to be trying to dodge. Uh, Auto oh attack. God, compel. compel is there. Shell Surf goes out. No support coming in. Oh, no pun intended either there. But the Legion team gets out of there. Losing the tower. One player. The Hellborn team having to group up his four, though. Yeah. Now, okay. So Pebbles has that portal key, uh, as we saw before. He's he's like sort of the one hope they have going on for the Hellborn team right now, man. 400 gold per minute. Uh, so far, nothing else seems to be clicking. Nothing else at all. Uh... Did he actually finish the home of the Black Legion here on Kraken? Pebbles could be in a lot of trouble right now. Compel and a hasted rally. Zergo gets the seismic slam and Pebbles will go down. Super KGE looked like he just right clicked that rune and then kind of didn't look at the screen. Could have gone for his stalagmites there and unfortunately pays for it by losing that haste rune and dies. Yeah, but I mean, right now, AFK Milking Cloud is absolutely playing flawlessly between their farming.
counter ensure everything is stacked. You saw right there they had all the triple stacks ready for Swift Blade. Uh, at the right timing, they had the flying carry there to assist with the stacking. They had the potions coming out. Uh, the, the, the ganks, the fights they've been setting up, everything is just so, so tight coming out from them. And that's coming off of a, a pretty devastating loss in that game one, setting the momentum against them. And Lions honestly making the game appear easy. And now otherwise, I mean, it's just the complete opposite results here in game two. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know who to really credit as the MVP here for this. They're all just playing so, so phenomenally. Yeah, they absolutely are. And I mean, Emperor, this is a team that we've seen for a while. The combination of VN Sensation and Pee Wee, at least, uh, going back as far as FYKU, then FYKU 2.0, then VDT, uh, along with their good buddies, somebody like the Pinky Curdy, who's not present here, but with the recent addition of Fabelli, from uh, the former team, excellent. And then, of course, Zergo coming from another dimension. Support coming from a pub superstar. I This team is actually looking phenomenal. I've seen them scrimming a lot over the last two weeks. And they are looking very, very strong. This is definitely a team that has the potential to be a new top five. Yeah, definite contenders here, as we see there in the semifinals, and about to potentially take a game off of Lions here in game two of this series. Definitely contenders for that for that dream hack spot, who would have actually considered that going into this event as well to say, hey, you know, AFK milking cows, they, they, they might do this, they might take it. We're finally getting to see them at a dream hack event. Mm -hmm. uh, rather, you know, Pee Wee and his, his buddy there, VN Sensation, so. Man, oh man. Well, we will see the uh, continuation of this game in just a moment as going into a very, very short pause. But the plus sides here from Lions, we saw that portal key coming out from Pebbles. Unfortunately, still level 8 and did just take that death helm of the black legion and boots finished up on yona some fan so he's not going to go down so quickly to that bubbles here in the future but i uh, man oh man i don't know what what can lions do at this point they have to try to make that massive team fight happen they do have the kraken keeper wretched hag combination uh on top of the bubbles that's they're trying to do to burst them down you have heroes like tempest empath uh you know bubble seed that are, are fairly squishy overall even Swift Blade too, but he has he's actually tanking up right here. He has an Abyssal Skull coming out. He has that Magic Community, which which makes it a little bit tougher. Uh, the Kraken Whirlpool is able to snare him a little bit during his spin. So they do have this massive team fight presence potentially, able to catch them off guard in smaller clusters, two or three, uh, deliver those quick pickoffs and try to get the gold back that way, but get the momentum going and you know extend the game. Right now though, the the, the lead is absolutely massive for the Legion team. Uh, in, in a fair team fight where they're not having a, a major positioning disadvantage or anything like that, they should be able to take it. Oh, man. Looking at the uh, damage chart right now, if you actually bring that up, it's preposterous. Bubbles almost had, he's within 3% of having more damage than the entire Hellborn team combined. Fabelli has done so much work in this game. Zero, zero, and 3, sitting on 400 gold per minute nearly. And I, just that top lane, he just completely shut down Kraken and then has been moving around with that kelp field, helping to set up kills and counter kills. He's done a great job. Right now, we are going to get back into this game. I, What's up? I think of all the players playing the suicide role lately that I've seen, especially, uh, you know, that aren't already the super known all-stars. I mean, fabelli has been around the scene. He's been known as a massive player for a while. But uh, honestly, I've just seen him, like, truly, truly, truly begin to shine and take over recently, man. I got every game I see with Bill man, I feel like he's doing the right thing, winning his matchup or winning it as well as he can for the circumstance. Uh, rarely ever see any mistakes coming out from this guy during the laning phase. It just really seems flawless. So, yeah, I got to give a shout out to him, man. He, he has been at the top of his game and playing like he's on fire every single day. Oh, absolutely. Both of these teams now going to be going for some triple snacked ancients. The Legion clearing theirs out first, but the Hellborn team going to be able to clear it out a little bit easier here with Keeper of the Forest providing that tankiness in the armor with those trees. And Swiftblade has still been doing his jungle thing. He actually went for the Abyssal Skull as the next item, so going to gain that additional armor, going to be able to help his team set up pushes if he wants to, but more importantly, going to keep his health high and will enable him to farm very, very effectively. What are your thoughts on this Abyssal Skull? Uh, triple stacks are no longer an issue. Uh, as far as uh, damage and take is concerned, it just makes his farming that much easier. He's constantly going to be healthy for the fights, as you mentioned. Um, it leaves his orb slot open, which um, so does Elder Parasite. Um, a little bit better of a farming tool, though, and a team fight tool than that. So I'm uh, curious to see if he'll be going for something like a Frostburn next or whether he'll he needs to be uh, go for more raw damage. Careful. 
Uh, yeah, five, five players teams. here from the Hellborn team, and there's no lane ward, which is uh, something a little bit curious. You would normally see a lane ward at this point down here in the bottom river, somewhere around where the Ward of Revelation is here from Seal Kid. Do you know if this actually got counter warded? There's a very real possibility that, that actually just got counter warded. Yeah, very likely so. Um, he does sneak out of there, though, the Swift Blade. He does. Uh, so going to be able to go back to farming, and he picked up his Mighty Blade, uh, eventually potentially leaving that orb spot open maybe something like a, a frost burn but another thing to keep in mind is that he gets the life leech coming out here from the abyssal it's a farming tool and it leaves the ability for a shrunken head which when going against the keeper and all this magic damage in general this additional magic immunity that shrunken could be uh the item he needs mm. i actually would like to see it energy field was just burnt there in the middle lane along with pebbles using his combo the legion team they're just fine though looked like they dodged that and as the tps came in and the Legion definitely want to press down this middle tower. Five players here now, and uh, yeah, they're going to start pressuring this one down very, very effectively. Favela using the shell serve to clean up the creep wave and scout the trees behind the tower. The Hellborn team instead going to take three into the bottom lane, try to trade for a tier two. I don't know how fast they're going to be able to bring this one down. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're taking it down. They have plenty of time to respond if they want to. They have ports up on pretty much, on everybody. They literally do have ports up on everybody, so I'm uh, going to port down here and... Uh... Yeah, push him back, so really, they're not getting anything out of it. Now they're just sort of oh, being countered. Oh, are you wall. kidding me with this wall right now? Shell Surf Saga the Sea, Seismic Slip. I, I'm done, Emperor. I can't, I can't handle these walls anymore. I, did you see what happened there? Empath hops into Rally because, you know, she did not want to have to use her own uh, port right there. Hops into Rally, hits the quick and gets the wall down with the Ward of Revelation. I, I... Support is, he's playing Godbone right now. You cannot give him this hero. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, as far as I've seen throughout this event, he has had 100% success rate. Even against, uh... Good for, good the, for scene. the scene. Yesterday, yep. they, they lost the one game he wasn't on, uh, Empath today. Super he KGE's going to die really in this dead. bottom lane right now. There's the kelp field coming out, and the push stick is available. Pushes him through the kelp field to cancel the TP. Shell Surf Song of the Sea and KGE goes down. That was actually a level 8 Pebbles trying to pick off a Bubbles. In the end, Super KGE did about 20% of Bubbles' health after he missed the combo. And Fabelli just turned it around. It's Even time for Lions. Combo. Even if he hit the combo, man. Yeah. No, it, it was never going to happen. Lions is clearly on tilt right now. Yeah, and they're just trying to make something happen. But yeah, the Pebbles is ridiculously farmed there. Grave Locket, uh, you know, push book there. Steam Boots, what can they do? What can they do? I mean, this has been... This has just been absolute crush since level one. I gotta say, they, they laned it phenomenally. They did lane it phenomenally, and then they all played their lanes phenomenally. Uh, Rally going up in mid. That was no problem for him to handle that matchup. We saw Fabelli just totally take control of lane against the Kraken. I want to say, I didn't get to see the regen situation, but, you know, I mentioned before how strong he is playing his suicide lanes lately, and, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm looking for him. They need to make that team fight happen, but there's such a golden experience disparity. They can't make the team fight happen because they'd be going and suiciding at this point in a static farm game. Due to the nature of how fast uh, the Legion team is farming and the edge they have, they're going to be farming more. So they're sort of just crossing their fingers at this point. They really are. Yep, yeah, hoping for some kind of a miracle. Ice Brand picked up here on Swift Blade. We saw a portal key just grabbed by, t uh, by Bubbles. He's sitting on 450 gold per minute. Um, I don't know. Legion team, they're, they're certainly hoping for something, but... I, at this point, maybe just trying to compose themselves, and when you're in this series situation, you have to seriously evaluate whether or not keeping in this game, possibly running the risk of putting people on tilt or more on tilt, starting to deteriorate that mental situation is worth the chance, the very, very small chance of making a comeback. Yeah, I mean, for a team as experienced as Lions or any of these guys, I don't... It, it is something to consider, but they don't consider themselves totally out of the game. They do have that team fight, and it, it isn't so much that if they, if, they, if they screw up on the Legion side, they have one huge fight going. It isn't something that they can't come back from. I mean, the swing potential is there. Another lost team fight, another wipe, and I'd say, sure, then throw in the towel. If it enters, like, yeah. the, the range of 15k at that point, yeah, maybe maybe so, but yes. right now, yeah, they can... 
they can hold it. Something that Insania likes to point out is actually the uh, percentage-based advantage. Right now, of course, we see the 9k, 10k advantage, but only sitting at 57, 58 percent uh, of the resources controlled in this game. Once you get to that 60 percent range, that's when things start to get very, very out of control. So in that regard, being 19 minutes in here, it's a big advantage, but it's not insurmountable as Fabelli does get a kill onto Engineer there with the assistance of Rally and the Compel <laughs> Seismic Slam, and down goes Engie. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, they're just still doing what they can elsewhere. They're not actually setting up to take a push yet. They're just content to take that pick off and use it to allow for more farm time. Uh, so played getting really, really close to that Frostburn pickup as if he didn't do enough damage already uh, during that spin. He has his max out crit now. Not a lot of Swift players just do that. They don't really bother with the counterattack as much. Uh, you know, one point I think does give you 15%, is it? So it can be worth it, but it is only based on your normal attack damage doesn't crit or anything like that. It's based off your base damage, I believe. I forget exactly. Oh, Kraken's yeah, in trouble up top. Damage. Kelpfield going to be coming out right here with the Shell Surf already used. Song of the Sea is available, and there's the push, actually. They do have a TP still on Kraken, but there's no way he's getting out of this one. The auto attack damage is there. The Tsunami Charge, Shell Surf comes in, and for Belly with the Serial Killer Streak. See you later, Jonas. Some fan. He's now 0, 2, and 1, and I, this Lions team, 20 minutes in, one hero kill to their name. This is not the Lions we're used to seeing. No, I, they need to just go for a team fight at this point. Otherwise, oh, all the wipe because there's void used right here. And all right, Someone why not, man? If they get any pick off, any pick off in the world, they're just sitting back and farming. Otherwise, and they don't need the elemental void to make these ganks happen, right? Oh so. no, no, no! I love the use of it. I just wasn't sure they were going to be able to get that kill. But oh, Swiftblade oh. Ultimate just tore through that wretched hag very, very quickly. Yeah, I mean, in this passive farming game, just gotta stunt any opportunity for your opponents to farm. A quick pick off just gives you that much more, and we get ever closer to that 15k point. Um, swiftly, I think I saw the Frostburn is flying out too. Yes. Anything else in that career? Or is... Doesn't look like it. Just the fire. So pretty much at 522 up. now, uh, almost when he energizes with those steam boots. 513, I think, is the final total. So. Paste it up. Keeper of the Forest farming pretty deep here and looking. We, we did see support. Had a word of Rev placed uh, pretty deep. Is anything going to scout out this Keeper at the Flying Core? You're not going to see the minions there. So yeah, they aren't going to respond to it. Otherwise, looking to take out this uh, stack of Ancients. Uh, triple stacked up. Support going to surely pick up some levels here. Yeah, Experience we'll, for a level. We'll get some of that right now as Keeper of the Forest is still hanging out over here in the enemy jungle. No Word of Revelations down in the vicinity, but. Right now, I do want to call out the wards here from support as Pebble's actually in trouble in the middle lane. Compel comes in, Shell Surf, and down goes Pebbles. This is about to be a big team fight, though, and Wall going to be blocking off Keeper of the Force. He lands the five man root right now. Bat Blast comes in onto two as well. Rally going to be in a little bit of trouble. Gets the push stick away back into the crack, and the Compel there as well. Wretched Hag going to be walking away. Shell Surf comes up, and Wretched Hag gets auto attacked down by Bubbles. Engineer going to be in some trouble as well. The body block is there from Bubbles, and another gorgeous wall going to be chucking Engineer back out, but Pebbles after a buyback does go down once more engineer in some trouble shell surf goes out right into the engineer and a hat trick onslaught here for bubbles kraken gonna be going hard on to rally the big hit finishes off rally and gg well played got the kill and then gets out yeah that was absurd that was absolutely absurd the entire game uh really just looked like they were completely on point executing to a t uh, I, I can't count any mistakes in positioning, spell cast, anything coming out from the Legion side in that game. Uh, kind of like how Lions was putting together all the pieces perfectly in game one. So uh, both the teams showing they have, they, they have the capacity to tear it up. And this is going to lead into a very exciting game three, man. It, it absolutely is. And this is what we've been seeing so much of recently. In we have game one going very much so toward Lion. Game two, an absolute dominating game by the uh, VDT, the AFK Milking Cows team. And game number three, this is where it's going to come down to one of these two teams, their trip to Sweden. Well, they're already in Sweden. Their trip to DreamHack going to be ended right here. The other one going to be advancing to the grand finals to try to fight for that trip and that invite into the $30,000 Dream Haunt event. So very much so going to be looking forward to game three. Emp, that one's going to be coming up right now. And I mean, with what you've seen here, what's it going to come down to? What's going to be the deciding factor on who goes to the grand finals? 
I mean, I would like to say something special for the circumstance, but it's the same things every game. I mean, we saw... Uh, I didn't think it was necessarily a huge outdraft in, in this game coming out from VT. It was just the team play. And same thing in both games. I mean, they just sort of outplayed on either side. So, um, as always, strong draft, strong team play, and both teams shown that they are capable of such. So, yeah, we'll have to see. I don't think... Uh, I don't think